Hi, I'm Paris, and I was very excited a few weeks ago when the first over-the-counter continuous glucose monitors went on sale here in the U.S. Maybe a little too excited because I bought both of them, and I'm wearing them both right now. In this arm, I'm wearing the Abbott Lingo, and over here, the Dexcom Stello. And after a few weeks of trying them both out, let me tell you what I've learned. As far as accuracy goes, they're both pretty good. One of the apps is obviously fancier than the other one. That would be the Abbott Lingo with the blue graph. But the data is still there for both of them, at least until it's not there. With the Stello, which is the whiter one here on this side, the graph slides off the screen at 24 hours, and you can't go back and see it anywhere, at least not in this app. There is another app from Dexcom you can get that will uh, grab your data and let you look at it later. Otherwise, it's gone after 24 hours. Big minus for the Dexcom Stello. The big minus for the Abbott Lingo is, you notice I've got two phones here. This is an Android phone. This is my daughter's iPhone because I don't own an iPhone, and they don't have an Android app for the Lingo. So if you're trying to decide which of these CGMs is right for you to try out, and you have an Android phone, middle of September 2024, the choice is already made for you. You're going to have to go with the Stello because the Lingo does not have any Android support. What do they both cost? Well, the Stello, the minimum you can buy is a two-pack. That's two 15-day sensors. That'll get you through one month. If you do it as a one-time only purchase, it's $99. If you do a subscription, which you can cancel anytime, which I verified you can, uh, it's $10 less. It's $89 for a month. You can also pause your subscription for a few weeks or a month, like if you're going on vacation and you don't want to know what your blood glucose numbers are for a while. The Lingo is the better deal. If you just want to try it out, you're, you're fairly healthy and you're pretty sure it's going to give you the results you expect. With the Lingo, you can order a single sensor for $49, no subscription. If you want more, you can order more. If you order multiple sensors, they do give you a discount. But it's the cheapest way to try it out. Again, though, only works if you have an iPhone. As for the sensors themselves, this is the Lingo. They look pretty much the same. Little disc, a little bigger than a quarter, a little bit thicker. That's got adhesive, and in the case of the Stello, quite a bit of tape that holds it in place. I've had no problem with either sensor getting loose, pulling off. In the shower, there hasn't been an issue. They've both continued to function the whole time I've had them. Now, putting them on your arm, that's another matter. Now, I did the Stello first. This was real easy. Comes in this little thing. You open it up. This one's already been used. It's on a springy thing because it springs it. What it has to do is there's a little needle that punctures your arm. And when, you, when it comes back, it leaves a little filament under your skin. And then that's what does the sensing and it, it lasts for a couple weeks. So with the Stello applicator, it was all pre-assembled, all I had to do was, you know, I had to shave the area there, then um, make sure it's clean, soap and water, use the alcohol wipe, get it all prepped. Then with this, this little clear portion around here, you put it on the arm and you push it till the clear portion goes down. Once you get to that point, the button is activated, push the button and sprawling, it, it puts it on you basically. Now the Abbott Lingo came in two parts. There's the applicator, and I'm not sure if you reuse this multiple times. And then there's this little coffee pod looking thing that has the actual sensor in it. And then there are instructions about how to line things up and to push on a firm surface until this. I don't like that. If I'm putting a medical device into my body, I don't want to be following IKEA assembly instructions for that device before using it. So for, for the installation of the device, points go to the Stello because the applicator already has the sensor on it. But I swear, as I was pulling out, it felt different pulling out. I swear I could feel the needle pulling out of my skin. But maybe that was my imagination, because actually this one is this, which doesn't have the tape that I can see. It's, I don't know exactly how it worked. There was a, like a gob of adhesive underneath of it, but there's definitely a clear plastic coating around the edge of it but it doesn't really stick out very far. Anyhow, it, what I'm saying is maybe when I pulled it away, it was just the adhesive I was feeling, but I, it felt like it was a needle and I did not care for that. The Stello, on the other hand, it I, probably has adhesive as well, but in any case, there's it comes, as soon as it gets, the spring puts it on, 
puts the filament to the needle in, then there's tape already around it, which you have to push down. Then there's an over patch, which you put over it, and that's the extra tape. So there's lots and lots of tape holding that on, whereas the, the lingo is held on by a, a whole lot of adhesive, I think. With both the Stello and the Lingo, once you've got it to the point that you're ready to put it on, you can see the needle there, so if that sort of thing bothers you, don't look. But putting the sensor on wasn't painful with either device. It's sort of like a rubber band snap. Someone takes you know, rubber band, snaps you on the skin, that little thing, and then that was it. Now back to the Stello, the one with the more basic app, also has the more basic boxes. You get two of these boxes that come in the pack that they ship you. Each of these has one sensor and applicator in it, so 15 days, 15 days. And that's great that it's a month worth of sensing, but what about your data after the 24 hours? The problem is that their app does not keep hold of that, and I don't know why they designed it that way. With the Cello app, I can change the graph to show 6, 12, 24 hours, but there's no scrolling it. Once the data has passed 24 hours, it falls off the edge of the phone, and you can't see it anymore. So you might say, well, that's all right. I'll just take a screenshot. Okay, here with my Pixel 7a screenshot. Looks like it took a screenshot. And for the first 20 that I tried, I assumed it was taking a screenshot. But here's what it took. All 20. Black screen. Why? Because with certain Android phones, and I think all the Pixel phones, this health app is considered some kind of a protected, secure information apps, just like banking, they won't let you take screenshots for your privacy, for your protection. But that makes it even worse because the app's not keeping the data. Now I can't screenshot it. So I had to get an old phone of mine and go over and take pictures of the screen of this phone so I could have some record of the data that it was capturing. Big misstep by Dexcom in doing that. Now, in addition to the graph and the data points, you also make log entries about, oh, I'm having lunch now, and this is the food that I'm having, or I went out for a walk, or this is when I went to sleep. You can make notes about activities, uh, general things you want to make a note of, um, as well as the meals. And then it will show you when you are in landscape mode. You can scroll across here, see your glucose levels, and then when you hit the little green dots down at the bottom, it pops up and tells you the note that you made, like the one tangerine I had, and the veggie bowl, and so forth. And then you can tap on it and get more information if you want. Here's a list of my most recent events in the log, including a notification that came up on my phone telling me I was experiencing a glucose spike. When you have a very fast rise in your blood sugar, it will notify you about that and ask you, hey, what's going on, so it can make a note of it. The problem is that after a few days, the event log goes the way of the graph. The old entries are just gone. The solution? Getting an app called Clarity from Dexcom, which can be used with a number of their sensors. It's not really designed for the Stello, but it talks to it. As long as you run it every day, you can pull the data over, and then the Clarity app, I'm thinking, can I go back 30 days? It's held on to it for at least a week. Yes, I can run reports all the way back 90 days here. And when you run a report, it gives you all the information in a PDF, so you can save that. And if you want to see it on a bigger screen than your phone, because they're very hard to read on the phone, you send it to your computer. There you go. You can take your time and analyze your graphs and your numbers and your log entries. So that's a solution to the problem, but it's not the best solution. The best solution would be if the Stello app actually held on to your data, let you run those reports and give you those PDFs. Another big difference between the Lingo and the Stello is that the Stello measures your blood glucose once every five minutes, and then a report goes from the sensor to the app once every 15 minutes. So you only get updates every 15 minutes, but it does include those three data points. The Lingo gives you an update every single minute. So you notice the graph is nice and smooth, and the graph here is kind of chuk, 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 chuk. Well, that's what's going on. Is the updating every minute better than updating every 15 minutes? I thought so at first, and that's why I was so disappointed there wasn't an Android app for the lingo, because I thought, I want the one that does it every minute. I want to see all that information. But the more I've learned about how the continuous glucose monitors work, how there's actually some interpretation, algorithmic interpretation that goes on between what's sensed in your arm 
and what shows up on the screen, I've learned that doesn't really matter so much. The reason is the number that you see on the screen, it's not as simple as, well, that's what was sensed here and was sensed to the phone and shows up on the screen. No, that little filament that you put in there, it's in your interstitial fluids. It's in between the cells. And so it's not in your bloodstream with the red blood cells and the glucose flying right by. It's outside of that system. And the companies have to extrapolate based on the readings they get from outside of the blood vessels, what's going on, your blood sugar level inside the blood vessels. But when I went online and read other people's posts about that, I found out it's not uncommon for the numbers you see in the minute to minute to not be reflected the very same way in the graph. That's an example where I've read you should go with the number in the graph because that's more likely to be accurate. It's that algorithmic estimation of the blood glucose. And so the graph is when it's had a chance to sit back and think about it and it has more data points to put together, that's the number to go with. Now you get that happening on the low end as well. With either of these sensors, when you first put them on, they give you crazy numbers. It's actually in both cases for the first day that you wear them. And with both of them, they showed the first night that I was wearing them, that my blood glucose was down to the upper 40s, lower 50s. It was not. Part of that can be this compression low. If you sleep on the side with the sensor, you don't get the fluid circulation. It doesn't detect as much glucose. And so it gives you an artificially low number, but that's not the whole story. The algorithms in the software for these devices kind of get to know you. And so when they see what your glucose is when you go to sleep and different points during the night and when you wake up, I basically saw my numbers go up night by night. And I thought, oh my gosh, what's, I'm not eating anything different. Why is my glucose level going up? Well, it's not. It's just that it's figuring out that, no, my, my blood glucose was not down in the 40s. Then it showed me I was in the upper 70s. And I think by the second week, I pretty much saw that at night I would get down to the low 80s. That was my lowest. So never was I in the 40s or 50s. You got to be careful not to panic over what you see when you first put these on because they need that time to learn your numbers and see your ups and downs and days and nights so they can give you that more accurate estimation. And as for the software, the Dexcom Stello software, the, the features are as simple as the software looks. Go to events, go to plus, and is it a meal, an activity, a blood glucose where you can basically prick your finger and get that number, enter it here so you have that as a comparison. However, you cannot go into the software and calibrate that so it will influence what it knows. That's just for your own information um, or a note of any like I just woke up. I just took a shower. You can put those kind of notes in there that don't fit in the other categories. So that works fine for me. This is the continuous glucose monitor I tried first, the Stello. So I was already in the habit of manually going in and recording every any time there was something noteworthy, I would go in and record it. The only time it would prompt me was if there was a blood sugar spike and it would say, what's going on here? The fancy Abbott Lingo app with the moving blue background, it has some fancy features too. It has these thing called lingos, which I'm still working on understanding. I'll take a look here in a minute and see what, now that I've finished a week with this, it's supposed to give me some insights. But in terms of logging events, it makes a note of when some, it thinks something noteworthy is happening. The blood sugar is going up, blood sugar is going down. And then you, it prompt, it doesn't prompt you, but it gives you the opportunity like here, log events, how many did I have today? Oh my gosh, 20. So log events, and then it will show you the time of it. And then it asks you food and drink, exercise, other, including stress. Since I started with the Stello, I, I like that better. I'm just in the habit now of when something noteworthy happens, I put it in there. Now let's see about this on the Lingo software to see your progress. According to this, since I've had the sensor in, my average blood glucose has been 88 and steady and it's been highest in the uh, afternoon and evenings. And the Lingo software makes a big deal about this Lingo count, which I still don't quite understand, but I think it's times when your blood sugar changes levels. And I don't know if I'm doing well or not with that yet. I need, I need them to just tell me, good job or you can do better, then I'll have an idea what I'm supposed to be doing. The Lingo software also has a tab for challenges, different things you can try to get you more involved, see how it affects your glucose. So that's all fancy, which is what you would expect. You know, see in the box that it comes in, like you're unpacking an iPhone, which you need to be able to use it. So I can't comment as in-depth on the ins and outs of the software. 
with the lingo because as I mentioned I have to borrow my daughter's phone to install it and I have to go and bug her about what's my glucose spend lately or can I take a look at my uh, graph for a little bit so I don't have her phone to easily enter meals and activities and stress and so forth like I can do on the Stella with my Android phone. Well I think I've covered most of the blood sugar highs and lows of these two devices. As for which one I would recommend, I can really only tell you what I plan to do. And since I don't have an iPhone, I plan to stick with the Stello. If you don't have an iPhone, I think the choice is made for you as well. But when Abbott does come out with Android software for the Lingo, maybe by Christmas, would I switch over to using the Lingo? I don't think so at this point. I think the, the simple is best for me and I'm used to entering everything manually so I, I think some of the fanciness of the lingo is wasted on me. Also I found I tend to obsess over this kind of stuff and so having up to date every single minute numbers coming in I just don't think it's good for my stress levels. I wanted that originally but now I think eh, every 15 minutes that's good enough you don't need another excuse to be staring at your phone. But if you have an iPhone and you want to try this out but you, and you don't want to kick in a hundred bucks to try it out, $50, you can get one sensor of the lingo, pop it on there and verify what great health you're in. You don't need to spend any more money. But if you're more like me with an Android phone and pretty sure they're not going to be the best numbers and you are going to have blood sugar spikes that you want to improve, so you got to run some experiments with different foods, what if I get up and walk 20 minutes after eating? What if I try that um, apple cider vinegar? You want to do those things. You might as well, you're going in for the long haul. Go ahead and order one month's worth, which is the minimum, of the Dexcom Stello, which I really do prefer putting on with just put it up there and push the button and not have to assemble the device first. I'll put links down below this video where you can learn more about the Lingo and the Stello. And if you'd like to see my full video reviews of each of these devices, including actually installing them, I'll put the link to those videos right at the end here. And in future videos, I'll be showing how I've improved my blood glucose control, the changes that I've made, and how some anxiety and one panic attack send blood glucose levels through the roof. Not pretty, but I'll see you on the next review. There are so many choices and you don't want to stress. You want your health, food, and home receiving only the best. That's what we're here for. We give honest reviews. Paris DX.